Hello and welcome. My name is Josie, if we have not met before. I am a knitter, mostly a knitter, a crafter, uh, a stay-at-home mom, and I live here in Indiana with my husband and son, and this is a podcast all about my making. Like I mentioned, mostly knitting, but I do dabble in sewing, dabble in embroidery, hand dyeing yarn. I just love all the crafts and I have this place to share it with you. But, and I, I wanted to start off by talking about what I'm wearing because it's my only finished object. It's very exciting. It's the Harlow sweater v-neck. It's a little warm out today. It's like um, a high, high of 82 in mid-April. It's crazy. But hopefully I won't get too hot in this so I can wear it because it's so fun. So here it is. I will take some videos I'll probably take some videos and overlay them, but I'll go ahead and stand up as I talk about it a little bit. It'll help me, help me remember what to say. <laughs> um, so this is the Harlow Sweater V-neck by Kadri, and it's my first pattern by her. I really liked it. I thought it was really well written. Um, the yarn I used was Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the color Hazel. I I won't say that I will never use this yarn again, but I did not enjoy the knitting experience. Maybe it would have been a little bit different if I held a mohair or some kind of surrey, like lace weight with it, like the pattern calls for, but I, I didn't do that. And it was, it was too dry, it was too rough. I'm really surprised that like on, on me, this is just a, a short sleeve t-shirt, on me, it's comfortable. Like, it's a little prickly. It's it's not, you know, soft as a sweatshirt or anything, but it doesn't itch at all. So I'm, I'm really happy with it. I did get it done in time to go on my anniversary trip with my husband, which was so much fun. We went to Cincinnati and I had some cooler days, like in the the highs were in the low 60s. One day was high in the 70s. And I was able to wear this on the days that it was 60 and was so comfortable. It was really, it, it was just a great sweater. So yes, let me talk about, I'm gonna flip to it, sorry. Flip to it in my notes. Okay, I can't remember if I used the needle size recommended. I think I did. I think I used a US 6. Um, I mean, I did use a US 6 for the body, and I think that's what recommended. It might have been a US 7. I can't remember. Um, but I used US you know, 6. My gauge was 18 stitches after blocking, and then I used US 4 for the ribbing, which was recommended in the pattern. Um, I knit the body and the neckline just as written so the the like the hem and everything knit just as written and then I started to play yarn chicken on the sleeves I did not have as much as I thought I wanted and so I shortened the sleeves by three inches in total I shortened it one inch of the stockinette portion and then two inches of the ribbing and it actually fits me really nicely uh, let me show you so it hits exactly where I wanted it to hit hers come down like a lot farther so I'm very happy with it um, but I used every scrap of yarn I had like I unraveled my swatches so that I could finish the hems on the sleeves <laughs> so I was playing yarn chicken with just a knitting for all of heavy merino which is never fun, but it worked out in my favor. I did the high-low just as written, high, higher in the front, lower in the back. For the bind-off, I did do the two-by-two two sewn bind-off. I, I forget if it has a name. So she, Kadri, I don't know, her like, the pattern, I'll say, <laughs> has a video tutorial link it's, it's of someone else 
but it is so helpful to do the two by two sewn bind off. Um, I found it just, once I watched it, it was very intimidating when I started watching it, but once I watched it a few times and I just did every stitch along with the video until I was very comfortable with it, it was, it was a great tutorial. However, it was a, t it was a tutorial for the two by two in the round. So just the sleeves on the sweater hem, it's, I, I was having trouble like figuring out how to get it started because you also have like selvage stitches on the, on the hem that don't match just the two by two sewn bind off. And I did look on Ravelry to see what other people did. And some people treated it as like a, just a one by one tubular bind off until they got to like the two by two rib. But I, I didn't like that look. And so I found a different video of someone, I will link this below. But I found a different video of someone showing two by two of this bind off, two by two sewn bind off in on flat. And I just followed her instructions to get started. And then once I got to the two by two portion and it matched up with the tutorial that Kadri linked, then I, I was, I was doing fine. Um, but yes, that was a little bit confusing. That was the only thing a little bit confusing. And then once I got to the sleeves, then I could follow her video exactly. So it, it worked out really well and I really love it. Um, I'll give you a close up. I think it's neater than my one by one. Than my one by one ribbing. Or it's sewn bind off. Um, which is so fun. But yeah, I really love this. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say. I don't think so. It blocked out gray. I blocked it pretty aggressively with pins. The one thing that I, um, let me see if I can show you. It kind of like poofs is a little bit shorter in the mid section. Yeah, you can kind of see. I'm wearing this with sweat with shorts. It comes up a little bit, and I think that's just because I blocked it flat and pulled it with pins so that it would be like a panel and not um, not like you know suck in like ribbing does. But then because of that, I did not block the bottom edge of the hem. And so it kind of pulled up as it dried, just a teensy bit. So next time when I you know, wash it, I will, probably in the fall when I get this back out, I will you know, pull that back down so that it does not have that teensy bit of like flare in the front. But that's it. I really love this pattern. I love the v-neck. I, I love wearing it like under or over just really plain, pretty, t-shirts it makes it just feel a little extra girly and I really love it so I highly recommend the pattern okay I also had another finished object that I don't have with me because it was a sewing fail <laughs> it was a sewing fail I if you've been here for a while you know probably last fall I I got fabric for the Elodie wrap dress and I wanted to wear it to a wedding and then was just overwhelmed trying to get it done in time and so it, I put it under my bed and I got it back out and thinking, oh, this would be really fun to wear for our anniversary trip and I wonder if I can finish it. And so all I had to do was sew it. Like I had already prepped the pieces, I had cut the pieces interface the pieces. I literally just had to sew it. But the fabric was so difficult to work with that when I had cut them already, they were they were just bent pieces. It just it did not fit well. So, unfortunately, I got pretty far into it and then the last two pages when I like tried it on and realized this is just not going to work, then I stopped. So, yes, I have a sewing fail. But it still gave me big sewing mojo. It was just really satisfying to see this dress come together and be like, I'm actually sewing a dress, even though it's probably not gonna fit me and it, and it didn't. It just was so fun. It really ignited my sewing mojo. So I'll bring, I'll 
continue to my first whip, which is a project bag. I'm participating in the Dodgy Mal 2024, hosted by Little Drops of Wonderful. <laughs> Little Drops of Wonderful. I think her name is Allie. And it's hosted by someone else too, but I can't, I can't remember. So I'm making some project bags. Here's what I picked out. That pretty fabric. This is the lining. It's like, there is some tan fabric on there, if you can see that. And then really strong interfacing. I really don't know how this is going to go. I really just trusted the lady at Joann's <laughs> to help me. But I think I could see this being like too stiff. I told her that I don't like bags that are floppy. And I don't. I want a project bag that will stand up on its own. Kind of like this one. It's my ranunculus. And I love how it stands up on its own because it's almost like a yarn bag in there. Or yarn bowl, excuse me. So when I take out the yarn and start knitting, I can leave the yarn in here and it doesn't like fall in on itself. This my mom made me. It's just um, canvas. Cotton canvas. So I'm... Oh, my, my interface is starting to coming... Coming off. It's not good. I don't think. <laughs> um... So yeah, I really don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. It's a dodgy, the whole spirit is you don't have to have beautiful project bags. You don't have to stress about it. You can just whip out all of the project bags that you can. And so I don't know when I'll have that done. I really wanted it done because I wanted it to house my next whip I'll talk to you about. I wanted it to house my uh, shawl that I'm designing when I like cast it on on my anniversary trip, which I did get to do, so I'll show you. But I just, I wasn't able to, I didn't have enough time to squeeze out a project bag. So, let me show you my shawl. Here's a little, I was like testing, this is one of the skeins, uh, mini skeins I hand dyed. Uh, to kind of see what cast on and what cast off I wanted, because I want them to match. And I also wanted to see if I if the needle size I was thinking about I would like. So I did quite a big swatch. And I loved it. And then I did a tiny swatch just to test out two different a cast on and cast off pair. Cast on and bind off pair, excuse me. Just to see if I liked this one better and I didn't. I liked this one better. So let me show you. I'm all tangled up. One second. What is going on? There we go. Ay! This is my hand dyed yarn that I showed you last week. Look at it. It's mostly pink, right? You got those light pinks and dark pinks, but then you have the pops of green, and then you also have some yellow in there, random spots. But because I don't know what I'm doing, and because some of the dye broke, you have purple, you have some blue, you have some lavender, you have gold and orange, and it is magical. <laughs> it is so much fun. So yes, it's just a long garter strip right now, probably an inch wide. I have much more to go on this. This is all I did on our anniversary trip. And when I got back, I need to do full throttle on the next whip I'll show you. But let me show you the cakes all, the yarn all caked up. It's so pretty. You could definitely see that this one's lighter in the ball. Like I think the outside of this one is lighter than the outside of this of this one and then they're both kind of that dark the darker magenta on the inside and so I think just more dye got to the center of the skein on this one and less on this one but I am alternating skein so I'm hoping that doesn't come across too like stripey and I don't think it's stripey yet or hopefully not at all but I don't think it's stripey yeah so so much fun I'm using us6 it's gonna take me a while. 
but it's really fun. Just plain old garter stitch right now. Nothing too fancy on the edges, but I am doing a little something something to help the edge stitches um, look neat. So this, is, this was so much fun. I'm really bummed to have to put this down, but I have to put it down because I need to work on my ranunculus, which I will show you. And then my next project will be a baby knit. And both of those kind of have deadlines. <laughs> so let me show you the ranunculus. This is from my mom. It's quite a bit done. You can see I did maybe like over six inches, I'd say. Six inches. And now I'm on the ribbing of the hem. I'm also kind of playing yarn chicken with this and I'm super bummed about it. I am knitting it longer than the pattern called for and uh, just what my mom requested. She wanted it a little bit longer, a little bit past her hips. So I am knitting it longer than the pattern called for and I'm at the gauge of the pattern and so I think it's just too I think it's too long. Sorry. I think because I knitted it long, I'm running out of yarn faster than I thought I would. So yes, what I did, this is where I was last time. Last time I filmed. And once I got to my third ball of yarn, it's, I'm using Cascade 220 worsted weight and um, Barocco Ariel uh, mohair held together and once I got to my third ball of Cascade 220 I knit a few rounds and then I started to weigh the yarn after like every five rounds to, just to see how much yarn I used and I started to weigh the Cascade 220 yarn because that's what I'm running low on um, after every five rounds to see how much I used per each round and I calculated that I was using about 2.5 grams per round and so knowing that I needed I wanted a good amount on the hem I wanted to stop before 30 grams and then just switch to the hem and knit as much as the hem as I could until there's you know I have a yarn length that's like four times the size of my circumference so that I could then knit or so a bind off. So I'm currently on the hem and I'm just, I stopped knitting at 33 grams and then I switched to the hem and I am using recommended needle sizes for, for both of these. And I just, it's, so it was a little bit shorter. I just think it'll be shorter than what my mom wanted. I, I'm guessing it will be about an inch, maybe an inch and a half shorter than what she wanted but I'm gonna use up the whole skein. And then I'll have just one 100 gram, 100 gram ball left of Cascade 220 for the sleeves. And I just have no idea if that will be enough. I'm obviously going to split them in two and have 50 grams, but I don't know if that's gonna be enough yarn. It might not be enough. So I might, I might have to buy more. Well, obviously, I'm, I'm going to make sure that she tries this on before I stop, um, before I bind off, just in case. Like, she's not happy with the body length, and the sleeves are too short, then, you know, one more hank of yarn will be well worth it. But yes, I'm playing yarn chicken, and it is always stressful, never fun, to play yarn chicken. But... With that being said, I'm having so much fun knitting on it. I love this yarn combination, the Cascade 220 and Barocco Ariel. Absolutely love it. And I'm also loving knitting on my other project, my shawl with the Knit Picks Stroll Fingering. I love that yarn. So knitting those after knitting this sweater, which I could not stand knitting with this yarn, is so much fun. So I'm really having a lot of, a lot of fun. But yes, here it is. It's looking quite pretty, quite long. We're getting there. 
The reason I am like have to, have to put my shawl down is because my mom's birthday is April 19th. Which, by the time you're watching this, is probably the day of, <laughs> if you're watching it on the day I release it, it's probably that day. Oh my gosh, is that true? Do I have like a week? Uh, yes, I'm filming this on Tuesday, April 16th. Ugh, there's no way I'm getting it done in time. But I obviously am prioritizing it so I can get close to her birthday as possible. Yes. So it's been so much fun, absolutely love it. And hopefully it will fit her well and hopefully I have enough yarn. But I will keep you updated. Yeah, those are all my whips. I'll move on to one acquisition um, that I got at in our anniversary trip. I want to say thank you to all of you who commented your favorite baby patterns. It was so helpful because I don't really even know where to look for baby like baby patterns. I didn't knit. I, I was I had my son before I started knitting garments and yeah, I just have never knitted for babies before and so I was really overwhelmed looking at all the patterns. So it was so nice to have a jumping off point from your guys' recommendations and I did find some that I saved and um, so thank you so much for commenting. The pattern that I ended up wanting to try after talking with my husband, showing my husband, thinking through, is the Seaside set by Petite Knit. It's a little striped raglan, I think, and it has some buttons um, to help get it over the head, and then it's got a matching pant set. And I picked this because it reminds me of my cousin. So my cousin is the one that is pregnant and having a baby and I think July and it reminds me of her. She's uh, just the word that I kept using with my husband was classy. She's just she's classy. She likes nice things and this just looked like it would that she would like it. Whereas some of the other baby patterns I was finding were like a thicker gauge and looked more like baby. Whereas this one looked like a grown-up clothes that were just shrunk down to fit a baby. I don't know if that makes sense, but the colors I went for were this cream and navy. The navy looks... Oh, there we go. That's better. Uh, maybe right there. The navy and the cream. It's a very, 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 very white cream. Um, there was white there, and I didn't get the white. I got the green, but it's kind of hard to tell. And then I got a navy. Of course, it's being blown out. And back here is too dark. Let me autocorrect back to my face. There we go. So this is Cascade Heritage. 75 Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon. Fingering weight, and I'm really excited about it. I think it, this is like a classic classic pairing, color pairing, and I think she'll really love that a lot for her, for her little scent. I think I'm gonna knit the four to six month size so that when he wears it, he can be a little bit older, but we'll see. I might knit a little bit smaller because it is fingering weight and that would take a while. Depends on how, um, how quickly I can get my mom's sweater done because this will be the next priority. I doubt I can get it done by her baby shower, but hopefully before the baby comes. So yeah, that is my only acquisition, my only plan really for the next set. But for this last portion, I wanted to talk about all the patterns that have been inspiring me this spring. And so I did have, I did include the C set, the C side set by Petite Knit because it was, it was just very cute and it's inspiring me thinking about knitting for my cousin. So, so that's been really fun. And then I also wanted to mention the the other favorite pattern that I think only one person mentioned in my comments last video, but I really loved it because it was very, like, she did, it just looks very adaptable, very kind of customizable. You can switch out the garter edge for uh, ribbing. You can shorten it into a pullover, which the person who messaged me told me about. Thank you. 
and or you can keep it as a cardigan so it's the oh boy per perium cardigan by kelly van i don't know i'll write it on the screen i think it, it was super cute she has a newborn version that's free and then she has a beyond per perium so sorry um that is for like older children and I just really liked the look of it. I loved how it looked with hand dyed yarn. I loved that it was a thicker gauge, which would make it go faster. So if I'm, if like we ever have another child, I think that would be so much fun to knit them. So that was been very inspiring, that piece of uh, that cardigan. The other one I had was the Avenue Slipover by Deborah Laporte. It's very cute. It's she, hers is white and it has this like really large grid pattern that I think looks would look really beautiful in the spring like transition weather. I don't have enough yarn in my stash to knit it, but it is very inspiring. It's very cute. Um, the other new newer to me pattern is the broom by Andrea Mowry. It actually just came out. It was just released recently and it is beautiful. It looks so cozy and after knitting this and like feeling this yarn and it's not bothering me like while wearing it. It's, it's, it is comfortable to wear but it's not cozy and so after knitting this and like oh I really love this sweater but I want something like cozy. I want a sweatshirt feel super soft kind of cardigan or a uh, sweater and she came out with this and I was like I think that's it <laughs> so if you haven't seen it go check it out it looks really super cozy that's just the word that I'm using because it really does look like a sweatshirt in a sweater and then I have two shawls that have been inspiring me. I have quite a few shawls that have been inspiring me I've really been thinking a lot about that I want to have items that I can knit for people or crochet even for people when they're going through a hard time like prayer shawls I've done a prayer pot holder before but they both take a long time and I've heard that crocheting goes a lot faster than knitting and so I want to try crochet I just want to have a repertoire of several patterns that I have tried and that I like and so that when I hear of someone that could use a prayer shawl I can just go to this you know bin of prayer shawl patterns and I can grab one that I'm in the mood to knit and grab one that has of course easy to care for yarn so probably acrylic and then just start so I've been looking at some trying to find easy ones and I I have found a few. Most of them have been crochet because again I've heard they go faster but it's been one was the Cozy Comfort Prayer Shawl by Kathy North. This looked really fuzzy and really cozy and that's what you want in a prayer shawl. That's what I want to give. I want to give something that's like wearing a blanket but that's not a blanket and so it looked really cozy and so that one has been inspiring and then the other one was the Omar wrap by Tony Lipsy that one also looked cozy I really liked the cozy comfort prayer shawl because it's a rectangle shape and I feel like that's a little bit more modern than the classic triangle shape at least for me before I started knitting I didn't see anyone wear a triangle shape shawl like a triangle like you know like a classic the big point in the middle and then wrap it over your shoulders I never saw anyone wear that and so I think a rectangle shape is more like people know what to do with a rectangle shawl who don't knit or crochet at least I think I, th I feel like I've seen people wear larger scarves than like triangle shawls I just don't see that in my everyday life so Yes, I'm just hoping for a bin of tried and true shawls that I have tried out and that I like and know how to make that when I hear of someone that's going through a hard time or 
needs prayer that I can just grab one, grab a pattern and, and start. Go to the go to Joanne's or Michael's, grab a color that reminds me of them and just start. That's my goal. So I've been, been I've been getting inspired by looking at different prayer shawls. And I have found one knitted one, but most of them have been crochet, even though I'm not a proficient crocheter at all. I've crocheted a few things, but not a lot. So but I want to get started. I want to try. So yes, that is all I have for you today. I hope you are enjoying spring weather wherever you are. And let me know in the comments what you're working on, what is what patterns are bringing you inspiration because hearing all of your pattern suggestions was so helpful and so nice to connect with you guys. So let me know if you have any prayer shawl patterns that you have used or just shawls that you feel like people who aren't knitters or crocheters would appreciate like gifting, getting, receiving, I guess. So yeah, I can't wait to connect with you in the comments. Can't wait to connect with you in a few weeks. In the meantime, I hope you have a lot of fun working on knitting, creating, crafting, whatever brings you joy. So I'll see you soon. Bye.